So we, we have a system here that we just turned on like maybe four minutes ago. Seems like it's cooling fine. Just put our gauges on. And if you look at our pressures, if we were just looking at the low side, I'd say, oh yeah, it's working just fine. Look at our high side pressure, 407 PSI. Let's also look, oh wow, look at our LSAT. Our liquid saturation temperature should never be more than 30 degrees above ambient. You know what temperature it is? I have no idea. It's probably like 75. Yeah. Well, this is 156. So 75 plus 30 is all it should be. So 105. So we're we're over we're 51 degrees higher than it should be. So I think this system has a fixed regulating device. But look at our superheat. We only have two degrees of superheat because it's pushing so much refrigerant through. And that can actually become dangerous for the compressor. See, we're taking our temperature measurement here. So that, that refrigerant is only warming up like one or two degrees before it gets all the way back to here, which means liquid could potentially get there. We're gonna clean this coil because I'm guessing that's what's causing it. Let's just have a look down here. Yeah, look at this. So this coil is completely plugged with nasty stuff. And this will make the unit run way too hot. Yeah, this is completely plugged. The air coming out of here is really hot. So measuring the air temperature coming out of here, it's actually not as high as I expected. Like a hundred and... 130 depending on where you check it and the temperature is low battery temperature is 76 so it's like exactly 50 degrees above what it's supposed to be not good we're all set let's look at our sub cooling probably gonna be really high too yeah look 28 degrees of sub cooling so if this pressure was really high and this number was really high and that coil is clean, then I would tell you that the system is way overcharged. But of course, I don't think that's the case. I think this coil is just dirty. So let's clean that coil, see what pressure it brings it down to. I think the best way to do this is to just take out these two screws here and then lift the fan out. This. Mindful of the wires, and oftentimes just set the fan like that. And I've got it leaning here, so it's not gonna twist off or torque those wires in a bad way. Um, the other thing that you could do is take off all of these shrouds, but we're gonna spray it from the inside since this fan is pulling air up this way, all the stuff gets stuck on the outside. So if we spray it backwards of where it normally goes. Should be able to rinse all that off. Wow, look how plugged it is. Can't even tell it's coil. Looks like cardboard. So out of this coil, you can't see anything. But on this side, you can see daylight. So we turned the system back on. We had to wait for the delay on this load management program thing. But after it came back on, ran for a few minutes and the coil dried out. You can see this is all dry now, except for maybe way at the bottom there's a little bit of moisture. Um, and look at our pressures, 210, right on the dot. For the high side, 67 on the low. Our liquid saturation temperature is 104, remember I was saying it should be like 105? So that's exactly where it needs to be, so we're good there. Vapor saturation temperature is 38, so the coil's not in any danger of freezing. Running a lot better. 215 PSI down from like 410. And air temperature coming out of here, maybe, maybe 85. Oftentimes I'll see like around 115 for the air coming out. You measure like right here. Feels good. You get a nice sweating back all the way to the compressor. So I think we're gonna take the gauges off and call her good.